x, that equals 0, and tan x over x equals 1 again. If you know those limits, you can break down all the ones I'm going to give you into those three identities. If you can do that, this is, is very easy to master. But it involves some thinking outside the box in certain cases. Would you like to see some examples of how to do that? Okay, let's start over here. Just memorize those three properties of, of limits, all right? Those are the proofs that we just did. Also, I'll say it, it's got to fit those pretty darn perfectly in order to be true. All right, so let's start with some examples. You're going to see some interesting mathematics. This is kind of thinking outside the box. We're trying to make these things fit in the format that I just gave you, okay? One of those three formats of, of limits. <coughs> we'll start there. Now, firstly, is this exactly like the limit that I gave you? What's different about this? Two is a problem. Two is a problem. What we need to do somehow is we need to make the inside angle the same thing as the denominator. So, for instance, if I have a 2x inside my angle, I need a 2x on the bottom of my fraction. Are you with me on that? you got to have that. Otherwise, it's not exactly the same. You can't do that limit. I'll show you how to do this in just a second. So since we have this, maybe we can do something a little bit special. The only thing we can really do is multiply by 1, right? That, that's it. Otherwise, we change the value of the limit. But maybe we can multiply by 1 in a special way. For instance, what if I said, you know what? I want to multiply by 1, but I'm going to make it 2 over 2. Is that legal to do? OK. Let's see what we can do with this thing. Now, you can put the 2s anywhere you want to, provided you don't change this. A lot of people, when they're first starting on a trigonometry, hopefully this is not you, they go, well, let's just pull the two out front. Wouldn't that be easy? No, you can't do that. that, is, that you can't do that, right? That, that is 2x. You can't change that unless you use an identity to do that, the double angle or the half angle or whatever, whichever ones that you, you can manipulate. Those are the only ways you can change your sign of, of the inside of the angle, okay? You can't just pull out that two. It doesn't work. But we can choose to put these twos anywhere we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, let's be smart about this. Now this two, maybe I put it in front of my sign. But this two, let's make that 2x. You okay with that so far? You see where the twos went? Now, here's something cool. Do you remember that any time I have a function multiplied by a function, I can split off the limit of that function? We, we've done that a couple times right here, right? We did that. But with a constant, the limit of a constant is always just that constant. Let me explain that again. When you have a limit of a function times a function, you can break it up. The limit of a constant is always the limit. I'm not teaching anything that we haven't had before. What that says in plain English is you can always pull out a constant to the front of the limit because the limit of a constant is that constant. You, are you with me on that? So basically pull the 2 out. That's what you can do. That 2 right here, I can bring that out front. So 2 times this. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, wait, Mr. Leonard, why, why didn't you also pull this 2 out? Why didn't you do that? Well, if I, if I had, what's 2 over 2? Then I'm right back to where I started, right? That would be silly. I'm doing this on purpose so that I can make these two things look identical and multiply it by the number that's basically just left over. Raise your hand if you can follow that, feel okay with it. All right. Now, here's a cool deal. How much is sine of 2x over 2x? Do you know? How much is sine of limit of 
sine of x over x as x approaches 0. One. Now here's why this is also 1. You could actually make a substitution. Check it out. I'll show this only one time, uh, just so you see it once. But let's make a dummy substitution like u equals 2x. You okay with that? Tell me something. As x goes to 0, does u also go to 0? Yes. Yes, it does. Because if you plug in 0 here, you get a 0 there as well, right? That means you can make the substitution for the limit. So I make this substitution, then this limit now becomes u is going to 0 sine of, well, instead of 2x, I put u. Instead of 2x, I put u. Do you see how that now fits our identity perfectly? You can do that provided your, your, bound, or your, your variable still goes to the same spot. It's still going to 0 because when 2x is 0, u is also 0. It's still going to the same spot. Does that make sense to you? So we can do this. This is, oh, yeah, this is 1. Therefore, this is 1. That's our substitution. That's kind of neat. So then we have 2 times 1. What's our limit? How much? 2. 2. That's 2. Can you almost see it, though, in the original problem? Sine of 2x over x. How much is it? Not 1. It's 2. <coughs> What's inside the angle besides the x? 2. Interesting, isn't it? Are you ready to make these a little bit more advanced, a little bit more advanced? Start building them up a little bit? This was very basic, very, very basic. We're going to start incorporating some other ideas in here. So how about, just little by little though, don't worry now. But I got to warn you, I'm going to cut out some of the steps I've already covered in the class. So for instance, I'm not going to ever show you the squeeze theorem for sine x over x anymore because we've already done that. I'm probably not going to show you this whole routine for getting that answer anymore. Does that make sense to you? Probably not going to show that to you anymore. Um, maybe, one, maybe once more. But after that, I'm just going to assume that you, you can see that and then you can get there on your own. Is that fair? I hope so because that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> oh, well this is kind of nasty. Does this look like any of our identities so far? We've only got three of them. Does it look like any of them? Yeah. You've got to make it fit one. You've got to make it fit one of those. Which one's it's closest to? The tangent one, the cosine one, or the sine one? Sine. It's closest to the sine one. But I need to have sine over an x. True? OK. Is there anything we could do? Specifically, can I multiply by 1? 1, so the numerator and denominator that's exactly the same, that's going to give me something over x, something over x. Stump job. Remember that you can incorporate new variables as well, provided that you multiply and, or you divide and gives you 1. Mm. I want this thing over x and this thing over x. That's what I want. Can you make it happen here? x over x? Close, very close. So we know we're going to need to incorporate another x. You agree with that, right? Somewhere the x is going to have to happen. One over x. Oh, okay. So if I listen, if I multiply by just an x, I get x sine, right? I don't want that. I want over x. How we get over x? Say it again. One over x. How about one over x? Is that legal to do? Is this still one? Okay. Let's see what that does to our problem. If you multiply sine of 5x times 1 over x, you're going to get sine of 5x over x. Are you okay with that algebraic step? What's this one going to be? 5. So. We're, we're multiplying in such a way that we can find some resemblance to an identity that we already have. Here we've chosen to multiply 1 over x over 1 over x, which is legal to do because this is basically just 1. It's just 1. We're doing it so that we get sine x over x. You seeing the point here? You sure? 
Now, are you going to be able? Did you, were you able to think of that on your own? No, but now you can use it, right? Now you can use it in some of your problems. Hey, using what we found out here, can you tell me what the limit of this thing is going to be? Why is it five? Could I do the same thing here? Um, remember, I can separate limits by division, right? So you write limit over limit. I can do that. So if I multiply 5 over 5, like I multiplied 2 over 2, ultimately I'm going to have 5 times this limit, where the 5x and 5x is the same. I'm going to have 6 times this limit, where the 6x and the 6x are the same. I'm going to have that. If you want to see it for the last time, this is what it would be. You'd say, oh, OK, let's do 5 over 5. Let's do 6 over 6. I'm going to do a couple steps at once right now. I'm going to break those limits up. I'm going to say, OK, I want the limit 5 sine 5x over 5x. I want limit 6 sine 6x over 6x. Can you make it that far? You guys are right with that one. Yes, no? What can you do? What can you do with this 5 and with that 6? What can you do with them? You can because they're constants and we know that the constants really don't affect the limit uh, because you can separate it by multiplication and you'd be okay. This is all multiplication. That's great. So this would be now 5 times the limit sine of 5x over 5x as x approaches 0. Notice how I'm still writing the limit all over 6 times the limit as x approaches 0 sine of 6x over 6x. Do you see what we've done? We've basically put two ideas together. We put this idea that I need sine x over x. We put this idea that I can multiply by some constants and manipulate them in order to get my exact identity out of that. Now, I'm not going to show you the substitution again. Basically, I want you to know that a substitution is possible in these cases. How much is the sine of 5x over 5x? How much? One. This, is, this is 1 right here. This limit is 1. Whenever your angle matches your denominator with that sign and your limit's going to 0, that, angle, or that limit is 1. How much is this limit right here? So you have 5 times 1. You have 6 times 1. What's your answer? 5 6. Did you have that made sense to you? I'm okay with that one. All right, good. You want to try a few more? It's kind of fun. I like them. Teach you a little bit about trigonometry, won't it? Or at least refresh your memory about some trigonometry. And learn some things you can do with limits, which are pretty cool. Let's see about this. Does this look similar to one of our, our limits that we already knew how to do? Is it exactly the same though? What's different about it? It's got an x squared. Now, again, can you change the inside of your limit? Or I'm sorry.